Okay, so I've got the information here in my update form. Uh, now when I make a change and click Submit, I need to work on this piece of functionality here. From the Submit button, we'll call the Update Friend Servlet. Update Friend Servlet, we'll call the Update Query class. Make the changes to the database. Return it all the way back, call the Read Servlet, and then show me the updated record in the database. So I think I'm ready to start working on the Update Query class. I'll need to create a variable to hold my connection so that I can pass it. And I need a constructor that will make that connection to populate. Again, this is just simply a connection so I can import it from something else. I can copy it and paste it in from something else. I'll grab it from the read query. Those all look okay to import. I'll import the connection. It's not a read query, it's an update query, so let me find all and replace it with the correct names. Okay, that's all taken care of. So that should establish my connection. I need to create my method now. And I'm going to pass into my method a friend object and it will be of the type friends class. First thing I'll need to do inside of there is establish my SQL. So I'm going to update friends and I'm going to set Friend name equal to token one, email address to token two, age to three, and color to four, where the friend ID equals this token, number five. Next thing I need to do is create and populate my prepared statement. So the prepared statement will use that connection from up here from the constructor uh, and pass the query from right here, which is this. And these will pop these will populate the token. So the first token is the name. The second token is the email address. And it's using the getters and setters from the friend object to get that information to pass into the token. Last thing I'll do is an execute update. Anytime I'm going to add, update, or delete. Uh, I can't execute query, I have to execute update. And I've imported my friend model, I've surrounded it with a try catch. Uh, things look pretty good here. My errors have gone away. And that really should be all there is to this. So just uh, create the connection. Um, when we create the connection, when we do the update, we'll pass the friend object from update form.jsp. We'll come in here. This is the SQL to update the query. These are all of the getters to get the information out of the object and match them up with the right token. It's the update query class. So the next thing let's work on is the update friend servlet. And the update friend servlet needs to have a URL mapping that matches the action in the update form, which is update friend.
And again, do get, I'm going to remove NetBean suggestion and just simply pass execution on to do post. And in do post, I'm going to get rid of NetBean suggestion. And I'm going to do the following. I'm going to get the form data from updateform.jsp and I'm going to create a new friend object. To get that data, uh, I need to declare the data type and the variable that I'm going to use here inside of my Java. Uh, I'm going to parse integer or get parameter, whatever I need to do here. Integers, I have to do this. Strings, I can just do this. ID. ID is just the name of the text box. Which has an error that I'm glad I caught. Uh, ID, name, email, age, and color. Text box is just the name of the input box. This is receiving those parameters sticking them into local variables. It's creating a new object of the class friends and it's instantiating friends, running that constructor which creates the connection. Then it is building this new friend object or it's setting the new friend object properties using these variables. After it's built, the friend object and populated the properties. It calls the update query class. It instantiates the update query class, creates a new object from the class, and it does the do update method. And it passes this friend object, which includes all this information. Finally, it creates a, a request dispatcher uh, and calls read, which shows us that table. So I have a few things to import. Everything seems to be imported now. Uh, so now, theoretically, I should be able to make an update in my database. I think everything is complete. So let's look. And I can see the updates are occurring correctly. Now, the one thing I would not want to update is this friend ID. Um, and we'll have to figure out how we can protect that. I would not want the user to be able to set that to 40 because then when we get to friend ID 40, using our sequence and trigger, uh, it will generate an error uh, because 40 is already in there. So I don't want the user to manipulate the ID. I want the database to manipulate the ID. Um, so we'll have to find a way to, to prevent that from happening. But otherwise, I'm happy with uh, everything that's going on here uh, and the ability to update. So after looking at this a little closer, I want the user to be able to update all of these fields but I would not want them to be able to update the friend ID because if they update the friend ID, they could set it to something that's already there or they could set it to one that's in the future. And then when our sequence and triggers went to put it in, it would already be there and would generate an error. So I don't want them to be able to modify the friend ID. So I can come into the input type. I'm in update form.jsp. The input box for that friend ID, I can set it to read only. And if I do that and save it, now when I go in, they can update these things, but they can't update the friend ID. So this is a little deceiving because it uh, looks like you can edit it, but you really can't edit it. So I can do a little CSS trick. If I get into my style sheet, I can style the input element when it's read only. And I just set the background color to gray. And notice these are square brackets. They're not the curly brackets. Now when you visit, it's read only, so you can't edit it, but it's also this dark gray. 
to kind of let you know that it's not a field that you can edit. So just a little trick that you can do with read-only in CSS um, if there are fields that you don't want the user to edit. So after looking at this a little closer, I want the user to be able to update all of these fields, but I would not want them to be able to update the friend ID because if they update the friend ID, they could set it to something that's already there or they could set it to one that's in the future. And then when our sequence and triggers went to put it in, it would already be there and would generate an error. So I don't want them to be able to modify the friend ID. So I can come into the input type. I'm in update form.jsp. The input box for that friend ID, I can set it to read only. And if I do that and save it, now when I go in, they can update these things. but they can't update the friend ID. So this is a little deceiving because it uh, looks like you can edit it, but you really can't edit it. So I can do a little CSS trick. If I get into my style sheet, I can style the input element when it's read only, and I just set the background color to gray. And notice these are square brackets, they're not the curly brackets. Now, now when you visit, it's read only so you can't edit it, but it's also this dark gray to kind of let you know that it's not a field that you can edit. So just a little trick that you can do with read-only in CSS um, if there are fields that you don't want the user to edit.